recently 101 video uh, it's been a while but uh, I'm back with a really good video I think it's a really important and interesting topic at least for me uh, and I think a lot of people would appreciate a uh, discussion around that topic uh, so from the title of the video you can know uh, you can know that um, I'm gonna talk about the budget uh, friendly way of applying to the match uh, and whether you should actually apply or not if you do have a limited budget or at least not to the standards that most people will talk about. So let's first talk about what is the standard or, or how much generally people pay uh, when it comes to the match. So generally people will pay around $10,000. Uh, this is at least for Egyptians or the people that I personally know, but people you know might be a little bit lower, a little bit higher, but it goes around that area. Uh, and that includes everything, it includes uh, applying, it includes the application uh, fees, it includes uh, any extra fees that you might have you know, to pay for, like the transcripts and you know, other stuff in any ways. Um, it also includes the fees for uh, an estimated number of um, interviews that you would be going to, and that is around five. Uh, so it can go a little bit up, it can go a little bit down, and also it depends a lot on where you're going. I mean, you can be staying, say, uh, in New York, and all your interviews would be in New York. So you're not going to be needing any uh, travel, you know, um, uh, by air or uh, uh, or any plane tickets. So that's going to, you know, decrease it down. Uh, or you could be, you know, again staying in New York, and everything else is just, you know, in Texas or Florida or Washington or. Whatever. I mean, I, I, I don't know. So it, uh, you might need a lot of uh, travel uh, by plane, which is a lot of money. And also staying in hotels, which is a lot of money, and so on. So I'm just giving the average here is $10,000. I'm going to go into details of um, the cost of the match in general. And this is going to be a separate video. Uh, I think you're going to like it. Uh, it. It really did help me to research this, and uh, I'm just going to give it to you right away. That's going to be a lot easier for you. Um, so okay let's get to it so should you match with a, a limited budget yes absolutely this is just the short answer for it absolutely yes you should you can uh, and you know you can just you know get that answer and you know shut the video down and uh, and go home and apply for the match if you want but if you want to stick a little bit more uh, I'm gonna tell you why and actually how a little bit Okay, so uh, let's get the why first. Well, first off, it and most importantly, it actually could work. So it's not just an exercise. I mean, you're aiming to actually match. It's not, you know, practice for next year or it's just a waste of money. No, you're actually seriously applying to match. Um, and when I say a limited budget, I'm, I'm saying that you're going to apply to 20 to 30 programs. And it's not like I'm trying to tell somebody to apply to uh, 100 programs versus the average, which is most people would do 150 programs. No, it's it's really limited. I mean, even if you can apply for 10 programs, do it. It's It really is that uh, uh, important. And the idea here is that, as I said, you can actually do it. I mean, you can match. All that you need is actually just one program to give you an interview and one program to accept you. Uh, so one interview, one program, that's all it takes. So it doesn't really take 150. Of course, we're doing you know the 150 programs or maybe more or maybe a little bit less uh, to increase the chance. So you're gonna have a limited chance, but you still do have a chance. And um, if you do it uh, right, uh, you might actually just pull it off. So the idea here is that uh, we're talking about 20 to 30 programs that's gonna cost you around a thousand dollars give or take how many uh, interviews you're gonna uh, you're gonna get uh, your expectations should be low so you might not get any interviews uh, but if you do it right you will probably get at least one interview um, also it depends on uh, the programs you apply for I mean if you apply to programs that are competitive you're not gonna get anything uh, and if you're applying to programs that are at the bottom of the list, you're probably going to get more interviews. So, as I said, first, why? Well, it, it might just work. The second, even if it doesn't work, uh, it's a really, really, really good exercise for next year. And $1,000 is not going to make a huge difference for you next year. I mean, I know $1,000 could be a lot of money for a lot of people. Uh, but when it comes to the match, it's it's just trivial. It's not that much. It's not going to add to you that much next year. But it can give you a really good chance this year. Um, 
So good practice for what? Good practice for uh, for doing the application. Good practice for collecting everything that you need from recommendation letters, from the uh, medical school performance evaluation letters, uh, the dean's letter, uh, and also writing personal statements and so on. So it can only get better next year. You can only improve on that next year. You can know uh, uh, what are your limits. Uh, you can actually get some feedback at some point. So that's really good. I mean, also you can get an interview and that, that is a huge bonus. If you do practice an interview, that gonna make you a star next year. At, at least if you did learn from uh, from that interview, anything. Um, so that's really good. I mean, good practice. You might actually do it, as I mentioned before. And the third is that you don't want next year to go into the match and say, "Well, I didn't, you know, I didn't really apply." I mean, why? I mean, what have you been doing for that past year? Uh, you've, you're done with your simile. You have your ECFMG certification. You have everything and you probably did like an observership or have your recommendation letters and so on. So why not apply? I mean, you're gonna say I have a limited budget? Yeah, it's, it's you know, it's, a, it's an answer, but I think that applying uh, and showing that you did apply last year and then you're gonna ask you why did you not match? Then you can say, well, I had a limited budget, I did apply for, you know, very uh, low number of programs, so I wasn't able to get uh, as much exposure as possible and how competitive, you know, the, the matches and so on. So that's a good answer at that point. And uh, saying that, well, I just didn't have the money to do it, I mean, it's an answer. Uh, it might be a good answer to some people, but to me personally, I think the better answer is I did try last year and I'm improving this year. It shows that you are trying and you are trying and you're trying, and this is really good. So with that out of the way, so how, how are we going to do it? Uh, I think the, the most important thing that I need to tell you when it comes to applying a limited budget is research. Uh, not research is in publication, no. I mean researching the programs that you're going to apply for. This is really important uh, because you, you don't want to apply to just any programs. I think that applying to programs that would fit you perfectly is the good and perfect actually recipe to uh, matching on a budget. Uh, let's say uh, uh, we give an example. So uh, you went to uh, Texas uh, for your observership uh, and you got recommendation letters or uh, uh, some research or anything at all, uh, but you have some exposure, you have some contacts in there. It really makes a whole lot of sense to apply to programs nearby the place that you went to and the place that you went to itself. That makes uh, your recommendation letters weigh a little bit more because people who know the doctor that you went with, the doctor who's giving you recommendation letters, uh, are going to be reading those letters. So um, they might be more inclined to give you uh, um, uh, an interview at that point. Also, you can have some connections. I mean, the the uh, the uh, if you do have get uh, if you do get like really good connection with the uh, program director, or if you get a good connection with the doctor you've been following or observing or so on, you can actually ask him if they can give you uh, uh, a head, you know, a, a call to the program director and say, well, I had that student and he was really great. Uh, why would you you give him uh, an interview? That can happen. I mean, it's not like something that would always happen or something that is easy to happen, but that could happen as well. That would increase your chance. So applying to programs that are close by, programs that are uh, the doctor uh, you followed is affiliated with. Uh, if you know anybody at all who has uh, been accepted into residency or has uh, been accepted into a fellowship and in any programs at all You can just call them and say well if I apply to that program Would you be willing to uh, give you know a good word to the program director and say that guy is a really good doctor He could be a good candidate a good applicant. Please give him an interview and that happened I've seen that a lot. I mean connections is everything. That's uh, that's the main point here So if you have any connection to any program, please apply for that program uh, the third is gonna be uh, researching the uh, limited uh, availability that is in that program. And that depends on many things. First, it's going to be on your score. I mean, if you have 250s and 260s, I mean, that's really amazing. So uh, you can apply to a whole number of programs uh, if you want, or uh, you can apply to most programs if you want. But if you have limited uh, step one or step two scores, like 220 something or so on, uh, please stick to the programs that fit that category. That, uh, that actually accept people in that category. Uh, 
Third, uh, second, it's going to be on the specialty that you're applying for. I mean, if, if I'm applying to, let's say, uh, surgery, I'm not going to apply to 30 programs. That's just not going to be realistic. But let's say if you're applying to family medicine, for example, internal medicine, that might actually work. Psychiatry, uh, I think even pediatrics, it could work. So think about the, uh, the specialty you're applying for. Third, apply for programs that accept a lot of international medical graduates. If you do have a program that accepts, like, let's say, 50% of the, uh, uh, of the uh, places for international medical graduates, that's fantastic. Pick that program instead of a program that apply, just took, like, one person, you know? So your chance would be a lot more. Uh, again, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to repeat myself here, but I'm trying to stress on the points that make sense. So, again researching the program that is really important and from these you know perspectives the uh, the number of people they accept that are international medical graduates and also the number of people they generally accept I mean you're not gonna apply to a program that only has like say five spots uh, total that's just a lot of competition for one program but if you apply to a program that has like 25 programs or 25 spots that's really good I mean you can have a chance you have one out of 25 you can you just need one out of 25 so they're gonna be uh, maybe a lot of people applying, but also a lot of people getting accepted, and so on. Also, applying to community hospitals more than university hospitals, that would be a better uh, idea and a better chance. And also community hospitals uh, that do not get a lot of uh, volume or a lot of people applying uh, to it. Um, that would be really good. So those are the things that might help you uh, along the way. Also, taking care of uh, your uh, resume and your application would make a whole lot uh, sense and this is just for everyone I mean if you're applying to 500 programs or applying to only 10 programs that's just gonna uh, be the same advice and this is to make uh, yourself stand out as much as possible and there are a lot of videos for that a lot of people are telling you you know to do a good personal uh, statement to represent yourself to have good English to have uh, 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 to show not tell and so on so just research that really well and know exactly how to do a good personal statement and try as hard as you can to make it the best that you can actually do and taking care of your application and making it as presentable as possible there are proper ways to do the application you can search that online if you want uh, if I do have any links uh, uh, in the description you can check that out to see uh, some of the things that are uh, helping me uh, out this year as I'm applying to the match this year um, also if uh, uh, if you have recommendation letters uh, you know use your recommendation letters uh, strategically if you do have more than four uh, also uh, if you do have letters of recommendation from people who are outside the uh, um, the field uh, like let's say you have a recommendation letter from uh, a surgeon and you're applying for internal medicine I would I would not use that uh, I would use only three letters I mean I, I wouldn't add that for unless it's like really amazing or uh, it's gonna you know give qualities uh, that are specific to the program that you're applying for for internal medicine for example uh, then I would use it but uh, if it's just a generic you know recommendation letter from um, uh, someone outside of the specialty uh, I wouldn't really use it that much unless it's the only one I have or as I said it just it's really really good and finally there is one tip that I did think uh, uh, is gonna help a lot of people and I'm gonna use it myself and this is to uh, call every program that you're going to apply for and it's gonna be easy because you're not applying to a lot of programs so what are you gonna do is that you're gonna call those programs and say well my name is you know such and such I am very very interested in your program and I do have this uh, extra paper that I want to send to you that I can't send via the uh, uh, ERAS or uh, ECFMG or stuff like that and if you just give me your fax or your email I would really like to send it to show how I am uh, uh, interested in your program uh, or maybe let's say you have an extra recommendation letter that you can I mean you have four recommendation letters and you have one extra that you can just send that would be really good and just talk to uh, whoever is there I mean the secretary or the program director or whatever uh, you can also email if you want but I, I would call that 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 is uh, a lot better and you're gonna get a lot of rejections a lot of people are not gonna say well yes I mean send this or give us your name or something like that but it might happen to one program or two programs and then you can end up with an interview and that happened with some people so uh, that is a really good tip and I think that it can uh, it can work I'm gonna use it myself 
Uh, and that's it. Uh, I think that uh, the bottom line is, if you do have a limited budget, use it as best as you can to apply to this match. Do not miss it. Do not miss the match. This is really important and you're going to regret a lot if you do not participate in a match uh, that you could have, uh, even if you do have a limited budget. So that's been it. Uh, if anybody has any tips or any questions or anything at all, leave a comment below. I do always answer comments uh, or questions um, and or if you have any uh, inquiries, I uh, will be hanging in the uh, comment section below. So um, take care and uh, apply this year. Uh, hopefully uh, we might be colleagues at some point if we do match together and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day. Bye-bye.